friends, this is part 5 of Learning Java by Suhani's tutorial and with the demigods. Welcome to our channel and let's get started. In this video, our main focus will be on control flow. We will also be talking about if and else statements. So, let's go ahead and start writing our program and building up on our program. In the previous videos, we've looked at how we can represent data in Java using data types and variables, as well as how to input and output data. In this chapter, we are going to add some decision-making logic that will allow our programs to have different outcomes. We saw this a little bit in the last session when we printed out whatever the user inputted, but we can create more sophisticated control flow using these conditions. Let's break this down. What is a control flow? A program's control flow is the order in which the program's instructions are executed. All the programs we've looked at so far execute one statement after the other. We created a variable, then printed the variable, or we created one variable and then another variable and then printed them both. Each line of code was executed sequentially. For example, line one was executed before line two, line two was executed before line three and so on. We can manipulate which line of code is executed with special control flow statements and conditions. With these control flow statements, a line of code might never be executed. It might be executed once or it might be executed multiple times. The conditions determine how many times, if at all, a given line of code is executed. In this video, we'll take a look at the control flow of a virtual fortune teller program. With the fortune teller, the user will pick a number between 1 and 10. Depending on the number the user picks, the user will receive a fortune. Let's dive into this program. This maps out the control flow of our program and describes how we want our program to work. Notice, everything is not sequential. We start at the start of the fortune teller and our program will ask the user to pick a number between 1 and 10. The circle represents the start and the parallelogram represents the input or the output. The diamond represents the decision and that decision determines the choice and ultimately which print statement is for in fortune is run. Our one decision inside the diamond is asking the question, is inputted number less than 5? This is our condition. Based on whether this is true or false, one of the true print statements will be run. If the inputted condition is less than 5, meaning the condition is true, the lower left block is run. If the inputted number is not less than 5, meaning it is equal to 5 or greater than 5, then the lower right block is run. Only one of the fortune print statements will be run, not both nor neither. Of course, right now, this is just a diagram. It is a representation of how we want our program to work in Java. Now that we have an idea on how we want our program to work, we can take this decision block in the diagram and break it down piece by piece so that we can implement it in Java. Thinking back to the decision block in our control flow, we have three main components. We have a condition, the code that gets run if the condition is true, the code that gets run if the condition is false. To simplify our condition, we can just write out the condition with the less than sign instead of writing it in English. This is closer to what we, it will look like in our code. Ultimately, the value of the inputting then or the number that the user inputs will determine which print statement is run, which is exactly what we want. We call the less sign a relational operator. Its input are inputted number and five and the relational operator less than states a compromise between these two inputs. The result of this overall compromise will evaluate to either true or false. Since the inputted number is less than five, comparison evaluates to a Boolean. We call it a Boolean expression, and a Boolean expression can be used as a condition for our decision block. Of course, less than is just one relational operator. There are many other operators that we could use here instead. This is the list of relational operators we can use in our conditions. We can use the less than equal to, greater than equal to, 
And for equality, we use the double equal to sign. For inequality, we can use the exclamation mark and the equal to sign. And there are many more. Now that we have an idea of how decision making works on our programs, let's try implementing the fortune teller in logic in Java. Let's review our fortune teller program. There are three main parts of this program. First, we ask the user to pick a number between 1 and 10. Next, we output the user's fortune depending on which number is inputted. Let's implement this program. In this code, we already have a print statement that asks the user to pick a number between 1 and 10. We also have a scanner that reads in the next integer a user inputs with the next int operation. We save the output in a variable called inputted num. Now, the computer has to make a decision in our program whether the inputted number is less than 5 or if it is equal to or greater than 5. This will happen by the if-else statement. So let's look into that. An if statement is a control flow statement where if the condition is true, it performs some kind of action. In this case, our condition is inputted number less than 5. The condition will either be true or false. For our program, if the inputted number is less than 5, meaning the condition is true, then we execute the code in the if block or in the curly brackets. In this case, if the inputted number is less than 5, we would print out, you will do well in your exams today. This print statement would only be executed if the condition is true, meaning the inputted number is less than 5. So what if the inputted number is not less than 5? Then the condition evaluates to false. When we mapped out our, our program in the earlier videos, we say that if the inputted number was not less than 5, then we wanted to print out the other fortune. To do this, we add an else statement to our if function. The curly brackets with the else statement encompasses the code that will return if the condition is false. Similar to the if block, the code inside the else block only runs if the condition is false. We don't always have to have an else block associated with an if block, but we do in the case in this case because we want to perform an action if the condition is not true. In our program, we wanted to print out enjoy the good luck a friend will bring you if the inputted number is less than 5. So for this much part of the code, our syntax will be if and then brackets inputted num is less than 5 and then we start off our curly brackets and we type in what did we want to print out we wanted to print out enjoy the good luck a friend will bring you so we'll just write the command for that by using system dot out dot println and then in brackets and in quotations we write enjoy the good luck friend will bring you and at the very end we add a semicolon now this is our if statement now for our else statement we will have to start it off with else and then curly brackets we want to print out the statement with system dot out dot println and in brackets and quotations we will write your shoe size or shoe selection will bring you good luck today. And at the very end of this as well, we have to add a semicolon. And this is our program. Let's go ahead and run this. As you can see that a print statement comes out, picks a, pick a number between 1 and 10. Suppose we enter the number 3. Now it prints out, enjoy the good luck as a friend will bring you. As we said over here with the if statement, that this is what we wanted it to print if the number was less than 5. Let's try again by running the program again. 
Again, let's input a number, say 8, and then press enter, and we will see that this is the output that it brings. This is the output that we wanted if the number was greater than or equal to 5. So from this, we can also conclude that only the if block or the else block will be run. Both of them cannot be run at the same time because the output cannot be both false and true at the same time. So if is if the output is true and else is if the output is false. So that's all for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Please give it a big thumbs up and do subscribe. Thank you and stay tuned for other parts.